So why on earth would anybody in their right minds create this world and call it polar bear pirates? Well, I spent most of my career in target-driven environments, and it was always tough times. We always had massive targets to meet. We always had huge amounts of competition. On top of that, we always had headhunters trying to nick any staff we had who were half decent. And the one thing I never had over the years, I never really had the budget that I really needed to motivate and retain people. And I certainly didn't have the budget that many of my bigger competitors out there appeared to have. And when I think about it over the years, the only real resource I had around me, my teams, was, was people like me, everyday people. And together as everyday people, we quite simply had to be more effective. We had to make do with what we had. We had to certainly be more proactive, more innovative. We had to pull together as one close-knit team. We had to put customers at the heart of everything we considered doing. And we had to do something else, and that was differentiate ourselves from our competition. And I somehow had to sort of move from being a firefighting manager and step into the shoes of a sort of more leader-type person. I somehow had to try and engage people around me. I had to come up with something different. And hence out of necessity to deliver amidst ferocious competition, this world of polar bear pirates was born. Now I've written a book about success. A lot of people ask me, what is the secret of success? I mean, honestly, I don't know. I don't think anybody does. In fact, I think it's another tonsil manure. So we don't have a secret to success. Bill Cosby, the American comedian, was once asked, Bill, what is the secret of success? His answer was, I don't know. But I certainly know the secret to failure, and that's trying to please everybody all of the time. And I'd agree with that. I think that's the road to mediocrity. I don't think there's a secret to success, but I do think there are some keys. And I think the most important key, whatever you do in life, you have to be prepared to change to move on, to grow, to develop. Put yourself in the shoes of anybody who's been a big success. Pretend for one moment you are Tiger Woods. Picture your Tiger Woods. You're 21 years of age, the greatest golfer ever on this planet. You've just destroyed the US Masters by 12 strokes, and you are seriously wedged up. Excuse the pun. But what does he do? He decides to change his basic swing, just to continue to improve. Dick Fosbury, Mexico City, 1968, revolutionized high jumping forever with a Fosbury flop. But the people who never change, the people who never move on, never take advice, never listen to anybody else. And you may recognize some of these people are the people I call the bloaters. Yes, quite simply, they're boasting, lazy, obnoxious, and tediously egotistical reptilian shadows. The bloaters. <laughs> these people have degrees, degrees in hindsight. They have the answers to the universe. And they're absolutely stuffed to the rafters with opinions. Let me tell you all something about opinions. Opinions are a little bit like farts, and everybody seems to quite like their own. And these people have opinions on everything. <laughs> Every time I stay away on the speaker's circuit in a hotel, I ring my wife, I talk to my kids, I miss them so much. I go downstairs for a meal, you think, I go and have a pint. You go to the bar, there's always a bloater that comes up. Oh, you're that bloke who's written that book. I'll tell you where you're going wrong, mate. Let me give you some advice. I'll tell you how, oh my God, it's like being abducted by aliens. For some reason, they all tend to be male and they all wear Pringles sweaters. How, how old is planet Earth? How old is this place we live in? Most experts estimate Earth to be 4,600 million years old. That's an inconceivable time span. So let's pretend this morning Earth is 46 years of age. Let's call her Mrs. E, Mother Earth. She's orbited the sun without intrusion or interruption for 46 years. And then suddenly these gate crashes called mankind arrived in her back garden. That's around about four hours ago. We've been here since six o'clock this morning. And what have we done in four hours? We've desecrated the place, haven't we? Oh, look out, there's a mouse. Ah, oh, splat it, hunt it, shoot it. Jesus Christ was crucified 15 minutes ago. JFK was shot 19 seconds ago. Elvis died 13 seconds ago. And if we live to be 100 years of age, till we're long forgotten in some nursing home, and people are coming up saying, all right, cup of tea, oh, you're a bit damp, I think we'll push you inside, we will all get 44.4 seconds. And how do most people these days in the UK seem to want to spend their 44.4 seconds? Well, it seems more and more people want to spend it as what I call neg ferrets. Neg ferrets! Little warriors of doom with insatiable appetites for other people's problems, dedicated to the downside, macheting their way through all things positive, just to find that one negative. Man, 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 oh, I don't like Christmas, me. Can't stand snow. It turns to slush, you know. Yes, these people have a problem for every solution. They light up the room when they walk out. I was on an aeroplane coming back from the States just two months ago. I made the fatal mistake of saying to this British bloke next to me, hello, how are you? Gordon Bennett, nine hours of moans. I felt like saying, listen, you muppet, don't you believe in life before death? Please cheer up. Come on, cheer up. You are the sperm that won. It is moans at extensions. 